Hey y'all, hi. Hi. Empties. It's cold down here. I just remember that last winter, I had to have a little space heater down here, like in the depths of winter. It's definitely time to get that down here again. It's snowing, which is wonderful in so many ways, but it's cold. So some empties and some fails because I've been putting into this bag things that failed me. That I'm like getting rid of because I'm not gonna use them up. Here's the thing about empties videos. I always think that they're gonna be, what is it that I think that they're going to be? Straightforward, because some of my videos require some amount of planning and empties don't. It's just like I sit down with the products and go through them one by one. So they're they're like self-organized. So leading up to an empties video, I'm always like, oh yeah, that'll be an easy one. And then I get in here, I start going through the products, I get into the weeds, and then I talk myself hoarse for like three hours. And then we have this behemoth to edit. Actually, I genuinely can't afford that today for scheduling reasons. I truly only have about an hour, maybe less than an hour, which means that if I fill the whole entire time, the video will probably edit down to a normal length, like 25 minutes or something. But I don't usually manage to keep it to under an hour for empties. So how can I keep myself on track? Do you remember that time that I did, was it new makeup hot takes where every hot take was only, was it five words or 10 words? I only gave it like a set number of words. I'm not gonna do that, but I'm going to let you know now as a way of reinforcing for myself that the project today is to give you the essence of my experience with each product. Essence. Not necessarily the complete five paragraph essay. We're going for the essence rather than the essay today. If this is your first time to my channel, then welcome. I'm Hannah. I usually deliver the essay. I make beauty videos fascinated by aesthetics, beauty, fashion, lifestyle. And in general, I'm interested in quality over quantity. When it comes to something like empties and we're talking about value, I'm interested in value when it comes to beautiful things. And if you like it, I hope you'll subscribe. Now let's go ahead and get into the meat of the essay of the video. Essence is what I mean by meat, by the way. I'm not talking about the flesh of animals. I've only ever meant the primary definition of meat, which is like the juicy part of anything. Oh, I'm daunted. I'm daunted. This is what I'm facing. I'm just gonna go through one by one. Okay, let's start with something easy, something that I absolutely loved. This was PR from OC Malibu. It's the Undaria Cleansing Body Polish. So this is one of those body scrubs that kind of turns into a body wash. And I feel like when something's doing that, when it's doing both, it's a bit of a delicate balance because if it's a body scrub, it says on here, gel to milk, which is exactly what it's like. It starts as sort of a gel that you scoop up and it has scrubbies in it, but then it turns into something that you're basically using as a cleanser as it mixes with water. And when something is like that, if it turns too milky and rinses away too completely, then I just, I feel like it's a waste, especially because this is a high-end brand. So the important thing is that it leaves behind something on the skin, something coating the skin enough so that you don't feel like you have to necessarily put on lotion after the shower, for example. That's how I feel with a product like this, but it's not too intense. Like it does enough exfoliation and rinsing away that you feel like you have really also cleansed your skin and exfoliated and treated your skin. And this is the perfect balance between all of those things. That's why I'm describing it that way. It's not too oily and slick. Sometimes I feel with a really oil-rich body scrub, it's just coating my skin with a layer of shea butter or coconut oil or something and like trapping the dirt in rather than <laughs> cleansing and exfoliating and scrubbing and treating. But this is perfect. It does it all. It has that deeply addictive, like candied citrus scent that the viral body oil from OC Malibu also has. And the smell, I feel like, just pushes it absolutely to the very tippy top of the pyramid. It's like the perfect high end body scrub. The only issue for some people might be the price. But if you're looking for something luxury in this realm and perfect, and you know that it's going to cost because that's what you're looking for, I highly recommend this one. Another shower thing soft services comfort cleanse. This was not PR. I bought this for myself. I feel like this is the perfect body cleanser. Gosh, we really started off with two perfect things, didn't we? I mean, they're really different. So this is the perfect scented, full experience, 
spa-like treatment, right? This is the perfect everyday just cleanse your body product. I like it because it's not scented and it's not drying. In fact, the main thing that it claims to do is to be really nourishing to the skin and be really good for frequent showerers. Showerers? Not showerers. <laughs> frequent showerers. Chronically dry, itchy, sensitive skin, redness, stuff like that. I do get itchy, dry skin in the winter especially. Um, I tend towards dry skin overall. So an ultra soothing, relatively simple, fragrance-free body wash that's a pleasure to use, that's good for the skin, that's in, it must be said, an extremely aesthetic package. And it's not plastic, which I really appreciate, and it's also not glass. It's like aluminum, I think. The ingredients in this are so simple, it's so clean, that it's approved for use on babies and children, and that's not what I'm using it for, but that makes me feel really, really good about it being the main thing that I'm using to cleanse my body every single day. I love it so much, and I'm so committed to it that I did something that I almost never do, which is that I bought two. I bought a backup. I, Hannah Louise Boston, bought a backup because I knew that I was going to use it straight up and that I would want to keep using it when it was done, which, you know me, I like change. I like to switch it up. I don't believe in backups, but I did it this time. And I'll tell you what, the backup's already in my shower and I'm really glad that I have it. Let's end this love fest by talking about one of the things that failed me. It's a whole category of things on which I'm reporting back. The scrubs. No, not scrubs. They, yeah, the, sc the scalp clarifiers, the scalp exfoliants. I wonder if they're, yeah, there's another one in here. Well, this one is an empty too. Which video was it? It was opening the PR, I think, that that came while I was on maternity leave. And I was talking about how everyone's out here exfoliating their scalp and trying to get me to exfoliate my scalp. And I was like, I'm going to go exfoliate my scalp and then I'll report back and let you know how it went. So I did that with this product from Array, which came from Credo, a clarifying scalp exfoliant that delivers antioxidants and pigment-preserving peptides. This product from Nature of Things, which says cleanse, detoxify, moisturize. It is a cleansing body and scalp polish. And the reason that I used it up completely is that it was awesome as a body polish. I only used it once on my scalp. More information forthcoming in a moment. And this, the Anna Blue Scalp Cleanser. So these are all a little bit different. The Anna Blue one, it feels like it has, this is the one that for actual hair business, I think was the most elegant, like really well formulated, really enjoyable to use, smelled really good. I think my hair took to it pretty well. It felt more like head grains of sugar, although I'm not totally sure that's what they were. It felt like a liquidy, slightly exfoliating, almost body polish type thing that worked really well into my scalp and hair, worked into a beautiful lather, felt really luxurious and nourishing as I was rinsing it out, and was just overall a pleasure to have in my hair and on my body and smelled really good. I really liked it when I was using it. The Nature of Things one is more oils rich and it felt weird to put it in my hair. It felt grainy and really oily, but on the body, it was super lathery, lovely rose-ish scent, I think. But it was a rich, creamy lather and a rich, creamy rose scent, actually. Not too much of like a shocking, fresh rose, but like a rich, creamy, comforting rose. It made my skin so, so, so soft. I actually, I like this brand, Nature of Things. The other thing I tried from them was that tub soak. It was like a liquid product that you pour into the bathtub, and I had the most amazing relaxing bath when I used it. They're really on to something over here at Nature of Things, as you can tell, because I used this entirely up. But it felt a little more like something that's beautiful on the body that they're trying to sell you as an a scalp scrub also. The Array one is definitely 100% for the scalp. It has this pointy squirt thing and you put it, you know, into the roots of your hair and squirt, 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 and it's just a liquid. It's like a kind of menthol-y, icy, minty liquid that you can feel all over your scalp. And I think it's supposed to just be a chemical, like, yeah, a chemical exfoliant for the scalp. But here's what happened. I started experimenting with these products. I only wash my hair about once a week. But I started experimenting with them and my hair hated it. 
My hair did not like having my scalp cleansed, whether it was like physical cleansing, chemical exfoliating, whatever it was, I feel like I was stripping away oils from my scalp as I was using these products and my scalp was retaliating by overproducing oil, which it hasn't done in years because I don't usually cleanse my scalp like this and I don't wash my hair very often. I tried, I made a good faith effort with all three of these to the point where I was able to give you reviews specifically of them. And you know, you might have different hair than the hair that I have. And so maybe scalp exfoliating is what you want, but it's not what I want. I've gone back to not exfoliating my scalp. I'm, I'm not using any of these products anymore. And I didn't bring it down here, but I've started using new hair care. After much searching, I settled on this brand called A Curl Can Dream. Actually, I think the brand's called Matrix, and A Curl Can Dream is the extremely memorable name of the curly hair line that they created. I got a sample of the a Curl Can Dream co-wash, which is combined conditioner and shampoo. And my hair loved it, loved, loved, loved it. And I looked into it more and I saw that they have an entire system where they have a regular shampoo and conditioner for deeper cleanses. And then they have a co-wash that you can use in between. So I actually went ahead and got all three of those products. And I also bought the Light Hold Hair Gel to put a little bit in my hair after I wash it every time. And I've been using the co-wash. I usually use the co-wash like two or three times, so two or three weeks in a row. And then about once a month, I'll use the real shampoo and I'll condition my hair with that. And so far it's going really well. The co-wash, I like co-wash a lot. And I was using new wash for a really long time, which is breaking me out all over my chest and back. And this, the A Curl Can Dream co-wash is giving me similar results with my hair, but without that issue. So out with scalp cleansers, in with A Curl Can Dream, <laughs> moving on. This is something else that Joe used up. It's a CBD body lotion that he really loves and that he gets himself from time to time. Pretty powerful, has a lot of CBD in it. If that's something you're interested in, check out this brand. Hair, back to hair. I used up this bottle of Undressed. Hair Story is the brand that makes new wash that I was just telling you about that I loved. My hair loved it, but my body hated it. So I stopped using it, but I would like to get my hands on another bottle of this. It's a texturizing spray, but it's very watery and light and doesn't weigh the hair down. My issue with most hair products is that by the end of the week, they are making making my hair feel like it's time to wash it. And because I want to go a whole week between washes, that's not ideal. I don't like that feeling that my hairs are all coated with product. And that's why I only got the very light gel from A Curl Can Dream and I'm only using a tiny bit of it and it's working pretty well so far. Undressed from Hair Story is the best I've ever found for providing some texture and hold, but without weighing the hair down at all. I just feel like it's impossible to overdo. Like I'll use it and use it throughout the week to zhuzh my hair and I never feel like there's stuff on my hair. That's what makes this so great. That's why I used it up. I think this might've been my second or even third bottle of it. It's been my primary hair styling product for a couple of years now. Okay, more from Joe. Gosh, really should get him down here. I'll try to remember what he said though. When moisturizers come in PR, Joe usually takes them. I mean, I have the ones that I'm using now, right? Like the Jones Road ones, those really, really thick moisturizers that are keeping my skin in decent shape this point. I'm using the Ren Overnight Recovery Balm. Other moisturizers, if I'm not interested in them, Joe just takes them. So he's constantly cycling through moisturizers that have come in PR and telling me what he thinks of them. This, he loved. He absolutely loved this. It's from this brand Kinship. The Kinship super mellow hyaluronic gel cream moisturizer. So it's a gel cream, which is why I, well, I wasn't interested in it for that reason. And also it has a very strong scent. It really smells like vanilla, real vanilla though. Like it smells like you're baking with real vanilla and you just poured it in. Very sweet vanilla baked goods, like sugar cookie, but real vanilla. Soft, fluffy gel cream moisturizer packed with hyaluronic acid, marshmallow root, and coconut water to deeply hydrate, cool, and plump skin. And I guess it's that, that gel cream texture that Joe really liked. I should have grilled him about it before I came down here. I just know that he kept talking about how much he liked it and he was sad when it was gone and he says he wants to get more, but I don't think he's done it yet. He used up these products from Versed, the 
Autosave Advanced Restoring Serum, which is a microalgae and ferulic acid serum for aging skin and dullness, and the Skin Soak Rich Moisture Cream. I don't remember what he thought of either of these, but he used them up, so they were at least not repulsive, but he hasn't said anything about it since then. So maybe that tells us everything we need to know. They were all fine, but this one, the Kinship one, he was like, where can I buy that? Ah, speaking of the Ren Overnight Recovery Balm, Ever Calm, that's what it call is called. I knew that I was missing a word, like a marketing term or brand category or something. It's the Ever Calm line from Ren. It is a simple but very effective, occlusive product that feels like a combination between an it's like a hardened oil, but without being Vaseline-y, without being slidey, slimy like Vaseline-y. Slidey, sl <laughs> slimy Vaseline-y. Without being, yeah, oily. It feels like a hardened oil, but then it melts and it kind of becomes one with the skin, stays on the skin. It's a really unique texture, really wonderful. And it's definitely calming. It definitely calms my redness and helps me wake up with just quieter, happier skin. I find on the driest winter days, I have to layer a thicker moisturizer on top of it. It can't be the final thing, but I'm usually putting it on as either the last step or the second to last step in my evening skincare routine. I've been using it for years and I bought it myself. I bought this one myself. I've bought it myself about every six months for a few years. The one that I have upstairs, Ren actually sent me. They saw that I had talked about it in my empties before, that I've been a loyal customer for years and they kindly replaced this one for me. But if they hadn't, I would have bought it again. So it's a, it says at night, melt the balm with fingertips and gently massage onto clean, dry skin. Yeah, you think of a melting balm, but that's not leaving anything greasy behind. That's, that's what it's like. Joe also used up the Necessaire body serum. Super straightforward, excellent skincare for the body. This is effective, but not too thick, rich, or greasy because it's a serum rather than being like a full-on lotion. Oh, I kind of like this. I got this at Whole Foods and I feel like it was really expensive and I was, I just was feeling sorry for myself. I can't remember when that was, but I think that's why I spent the $22 or something. But it's a super potent, effective bath soak. And I like this green glass bottle. It's like a milky Arnica essence and it smells very medicinal. And it, yeah, oh, it's so strong. It smells like calamine lotion, which is like really, really potent. And it's so potent that it really makes the bath fragrant, therapeutic. Feel I loved it. I wish I, that I hadn't used it up yet. I don't know how soon I'll buy it again because it was expensive, but I've bought it before, I think. I can't remember if this is my second bottle or my first bottle. If I bought it before, it was also because I was feeling sorry for myself and it was a while ago. I just can't remember if I then kind of didn't use it up. I think I've talked about it on camera before. I think this is the second bottle. Let's just go ahead and say that every once in a while when I'm feeling sorry for myself at Whole Foods, I buy myself a bottle of this Walita Arnica bath soak and it's really great. Okay, another product that failed me. It's a little bit sad. I love RMS Beauty. I love the desaturated, slightly olive, super pale, palest shade in the newer foundation that they make. And it's also quite a heavy duty foundation that sometimes leaves my skin looking a bit dry by the end of the day instead of glowy and dewy. By the way, I coated my skin in Auric Glow Lust today, which I haven't done in a long time, underneath my other makeup. And I just feel like a dewy we be. I feel like it is really shining through. I did apply like a full face basically of glow lust and then I only lightly concealed on top of it. I mean to say, I mean to say. I'm also wearing the Juvia's Place Coffee Shop Gloss in Brown Sugar. I really like how it looks too and I ate an orange right before I came down here and I think half of it wore away and then I didn't reapply. So I'm doing it now. It's more intense at full pigment like that. I like it a little blotted, just maybe not quite as blotted as it got when I ate that orange. I never used Used to forget to reapply my lip product before turning on the camera. I feel like I'm becoming not exactly unhinged, but like slightly less hinged in my old age. Do you find me slightly less hinged than I used to be? Because I find myself to be that way. So I got this, the RMS Beauty Uncover Up Foundation, which is a much older product, a more original product to the RMS Beauty line than their newer foundation, which is the one that I the Recover Foundation, which is the one that I've talked about a lot and that I have kept through declutters and that I really like. I always shied away from this because it 
has coconut oil in it, and I was really leery of that because of being acne prone. I've had this for a while, I've been testing it, and I want to love it, and I tried it again recently. I think I've tested it enough to know that it, I don't think that it breaks me out, although I did get a little spot and I haven't had one in months. And it maybe it was because of the coconut oil in this. Anyway, it wasn't a thing where I got it, I started testing it, and it broke me out horribly, and I was like, oh no, I can't use products with coconut oil anymore. I got it to see if that would happen, and so that's what I thought I was testing. And that didn't happen, but then it was like, okay, well, what about the actual product? And here's the thing. It's just, it stays a little too wet and creamy on me. Look at that color. I love the idea of a cream product, a cream foundation product, in terms of how it will apply to the skin and it being skin-like, but it can't be so, so creamy that my hair is sticking to it. And I felt like with this, it was either that way or I had to powder it significantly and then it was like the powder wasn't sitting well on top of it. It was too heavy and stayed too creamy throughout the day for me. So it turns out that the other one, which does dry down and become sturdier, is a better fit for me because I just don't like to feel like I'm going to leave makeup on stuff when my face touches it. And this made me feel like that. It might be a better fit for some people, I think maybe depending on lifestyle and skin type and just what you're looking for for finish. It was a really beautiful finish and I just, it, it felt heavy. It ended up feeling kind of heavy. Super Goop Mineral Sheer Screen, the Super Goop Mineral Sunscreen. This is a lovely product. This is also something that Joe used up. I tend to shunt sunscreens his way because it's one of the skincare products that he uses. He had no complaints about this and he used it up. So I feel like that should tell you something. But he also didn't try to repurchase it again as soon as it was done. Those are like the categories for Joe. He, he uses moisturizers and sunscreens and body lotions. And either, there are three things that could happen. Either he hates it for some reason, and then he tells me about why he hates it, and then I can tell you that. Or he uses it up and doesn't say anything, which I assume means that it's good enough. Or he particularly loves it for some reason and wants to get more of it, and then he tells me about that, and then I can tell you that. That's really all the data that I have on this. It falls into the middle category. Oh, I really liked this. Matter of fact, what is it? 5% pro vitamin B5. It's a moisturizer. This came in PR. I'm like reaching back into the foggy recesses of my brain. This came in PR right before I went on maternity leave. I had only tried it like once or twice and I ended up taking it with me in my hospital bag when I went to give birth because I was like, it has that gel cream quality. It's one of these things. Oh. I thought it was empty. I don't want to waste it. I don't want to waste this. I guess I'll put it on my hands right now, but gosh, I definitely pumped and pumped at it and couldn't get any more out. It must be that then it, it had time to settle, or maybe it was like upside down in the empties bag or something. I'm going to take it back up to my vanity and see if I can get a couple more pumps out of it. Matter of fact, is a newish brand. I'm about to give you like really a really unscientific bad beauty guru <laughs> review. A newish brand. My impression of them, I haven't done research, right? This just came in PR and I started using it, is that it's very science forward. The claims and the packaging of the products give me the sense that it's very science forward. There are people who are like trying to be on the cutting edge, some cutting edge somewhere with skincare and make products from that edge. That's the impression that I get. I ended up loving this and using it because I loved the delivery mechanism, the pump. I loved the texture. It has that dual property where it both feels like it's deeply nourishing the skin and like it's leaving a protective layer behind on the skin. And it also has that cosmetic elegance that means that it soaks in really well. Like I feel like I can keep layering it on, keep layering it on, and my skin is drinking it up, but not drinking it up so quickly, like like a too thin serum that it then leaves it dry. It just feels really lovely to put it on. I felt like my skin loved it, but I think that that could easily just be based on the cosmetic properties, like the, the physical properties of it. All of the stuff on the back about patent pending pro vitamin B5 crystal lipids. I don't know. I don't know from crystal lipids, okay? I just, from the fog of barely knowing what was going on with my life, really loved it and used it up. Okay, I actually do have something more to tell you from Joe about this, the Refer Hydration Cream, which he has used the butt out of over and over again. And actually, I think, bought, like, look at this, like, cracking, because he used it up so voraciously. I think he bought this himself, actually, because he loves the texture of it. It's definitely in that category of loves it so much, wants to get more of it. It's, like, his favorite skincare. Refer is just his favorite. And he also really loves the serum in the pump bottle. He bought one of those, too. And actually, I also use that. I always 
was, <laughs> I get out of the shower and as I'm walking past our dresser where he keeps his lotions and potions in the top of our dresser, as I'm walking past on my way to my vanity, I always just take like a pump, I <laughs> like take a squirt of the refer essence, the milky essence and put it on. And then I continue on to my vanity to like my skincare. I'm always just like swipe as I'm going by. Joe's complaint about this is that he uses it up too fast, which I don't know if that, I mean, it is a full three ounces. So I don't know if that says more about Joe than it does about Refer, but he did complain about that this time. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I know nothing. I know nothing about things. I just can tell you what I what happened to me. So this is the Glytone C Plus Advanced Antioxidant Serum, age defying THD ascorbate, vitamin E, squalane. So I used to feel like I knew a lot about skincare. And as with so many things in this world, it's like the more that I learned, the more I learned I didn't know. And now I'm just like a leaf in the wind, hydrating my face, letting go of control. And I used this and I really loved it. And I don't, it was PR. Okay. So part of why I don't know is because I didn't do like intensive research and then decide to start using this. It was a thing that came in PR. I like vitamin C as an ingredient and I just started using it and I loved, again, the texture. It's cosmetically elegant. There are so many things. For example, the vitamin C, that matter of fact, sent to me, which has some really amazing, it has urea in it. And I love urea as an ingredient. So I actually do know some things about skincare. Okay. 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 I was so excited to start using that because I loved the ingredients and and it's all science, like amazing, cutting edge, blah, blah, blah. It has this weird quality where it's it's very thin. It's viscous, slightly oily and warming. I don't know if you've experienced that before. It's kind of a warming feeling, slightly oily serum. It's beautiful. Like it leaves behind a beautiful glow on the skin. But I don't feel like it plays as well with my other products as some serums. I am not always quite sure where to layer it. I'm not always quite sure how it's going to go under makeup. And so I haven't ended up using it at the same rate that I used up this matter of fact product. I'm bringing it up because this was the opposite experience. I was just like, I don't know, I'll try it. And I started using it and I just loved it. I felt like it melted together beautifully with all of my other products, with my skin. It was easy to use day and night, felt good on the skin, soaked in easily, but provided somewhat of a barrier. It's just beautifully formulated. And I don't know if it did everything that it says it's going to do. Fine lines, collagen, nourishing, whatever. I, I don't know. I just know that I really enjoyed the experience of using it and I used it up. It was like a something's better than nothing situation for me with skin over the past six months. Like that's kind of how it's been. So for skincare, basically, if it was something and it made me want to use it and I enjoyed using it and kept using it, then that's what I was using. That's what I'm here to report about. Oh, except for this, Sunday Riley Good Jeans. So when I had to stop using retinol, I wanted to replace it with something. I mean, nothing beats retinol, but I knew that I needed something kind of powerful, but that I was able to use on my skin. And so I chose lactic acid and I went for what in my experience is an incredibly potent, powerful, active lactic acid serum, the iconic Sunday Riley Good Jeans. My understanding is that it's really powerfully but gently exfoliating. And what retinol does is that it speeds up cell turnover. So in a way, it's like exfoliating on the deepest level possible. It's like exfoliating before the skin even gets to the surface, kind of. So I was trying to replace it with something that is gently, deeply exfoliating. And lactic acid, I think, is also hydrophilic. It helps your skin hold on to moisture. And I always struggle with dryness, especially when it comes to exfoliating. So my skin loves lactic acid. I know that my skin really loves this product and I've been using it for over a year at this point. This isn't the only bottle that I've used up. Oh, this, does anybody know what happened? This Joe loved this he bought with his own money after using the bottle that came in PR when this product launched. The Mandelic Acid and Superfood Unity Exfoliant from Youth to the People is an AHA BHA toner. And when he used up this bottle, he went to repurchase it and it was nowhere to be found. It's, it seems like it's been discontinued. What happened? There's a different toner, a different acid toner on the Youth to the People website, but it doesn't have mandelic acid in it. It's not the same, but it's almost like they created a totally different product to replace this one. Or maybe they used to have both of them and this one no longer. What happened? Okay, a couple of gel cream type things that I actually really loved and used. I usually give the gel creams to Joe because he seems to like them. When I brought it up to him, he was like, oh no, I I don't like a gel cream or I described it to him and he was like, that doesn't sound like the thing I like. But then every time he's like, I loved that. I want more. It's a gel cream. Case in point. I like a gel cream too. Who doesn't like a gel cream? Except for me, it has to be layered underneath 
something a little heavier duty, a little more heavy duty to seal it in. But I just, I like the way that it goes on and goes into the skin. Dr. Jart Sisipair, a fantastic K-Beauty gel cream. It's almost like a gel cream to me is a serum in a slightly less liquid form. And so it's a hydrating serum in a form that's easier to deploy because it's not like a dropper or something. You can just squirt it out of the tube. The Human Race humidifying cream is actually thicker than a gel cream. And this this, this is like Farrell's skincare brand or something. It's very good. My skin really liked this. It's a very nourishing, not too heavy cream. I would say night cream, but not to the point where I was rushing out to buy it after I used it up. I think maybe because it smells a little bit. I don't know. I was impressed by it, maybe more than I was expecting to be. And I, I'm also very impressed by the, I think it's like the Lotus physical and chemical exfoliator from Human Race that I'm still using. I have it in my shower and I'm still using it. But both products have a little bit of an intense smell that I think is the thing making me not want to rush out and replace them when I use them up. But if you're interested in that brand, and, and it's not intense, like it's abhorrent. It's just, it's like kind of like fresh ingredients smell of unscented products where there's nothing masking the way that the ingredients smell. So I'm actually not critical of it. I'm just going on instinct over here and I my feeling is that I liked and was impressed by that brand quite a lot. And if you're very interested in this for some reason, if you've been eyeing it and you're like, is that actually good skincare? Yes, I actually think somebody did something very right with putting that brand together. It just didn't turn me into a diehard fan the way that some things sometimes do. And lastly, look at this, the empty of the Le Labo shower gel, the Hinoki shower gel. I'm just gonna smell it. I I feel like it's the best smell in the world. It's so good. Wood, wood. It smells like spicy, fragrant wood. Do you remember that video that I made about my guilty pleasures? And I talked about, I don't know how long ago it was that I made that video, at least six months I feel. And the thing is in the video, I talked about the fact that I had a bottle of this in the shower and that there was maybe half of it left. And I said, if I only use a little bit, only every once in a while, then the bottle will probably last me another six months. Like that's what I said in that video. And that's exactly what happened. At least, it lasted me at least six months, I think. I don't remember exactly the math but I really dragged it out because it's very expensive. I and mean, that was the point of the Guilty Pleasures video, just talking about the math of use value, you know? So what I will do is I'll have something like this in my shower that I'm using all the time, and then something fancy like this, once in a while, I'll just use a little bit of it for the experience and I'll enhance my shower with it. And so I was talking in that video about the guilty pleasures video, basically about how to make a guilty pleasure like this make sense by stretching it out over the entire year. And that's what I did with this. I think I'm ready to not replace it though, the Le Labo. I think I'm ready to go on without it for a while so that it continues to feel special. I think if I always replaced it right away as soon as I finished the bottle, it would lose a little bit of that feeling of fanciness and specialness for me. So I, I might just wait another year before I replace it. And then when I do, it'll be really exciting. That is it. Oh my gosh, literally exactly one hour. Right now I've been filming for one hour and 19 seconds. So I guess I kind of did it. It was a combination of the essay and the essence, but I, I kind of did it. And you know, I hope you got what you came for. Some empties, some fails, and some scalp scrubs. No makeup though. That's the other thing about empties. They really show what you've been using and clearly what I've been using and Joe. We, we've been hydrating our faces and I've been on a hair journey. That's kind of what the, this empties reveals. So hopefully this will have been useful to those of you who are interested in hydrating your faces which I assume is everybody. I think I had better go. I appreciate you so much for being here, for watching this video as always. And you know, as always, don't forget to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. 